We're going to do a quick overview about um, performing a paracentesis. It's important to realize that there are both diagnostic and therapeutic reasons you can do paracentesis. Uh, so you, you'll want to keep that in mind when you're doing it. Why are we doing it and what are we going to send for analysis and are we going to do a large volume paracentesis? Now you're going to start with scanning to find your target. We are going to use ultrasound. Oftentimes we start with a curve probe so we can kind of get a sense of kind of deeper structures and look throughout the abdomen. But once you find a pocket that looks um, reasonable. If you can switch to a linear probe, it can be helpful to kind of see things in higher resolution. And actually during the case, if you're gonna use ultrasound to localize your needle uh, in real time, it can be easier to track your needle with a uh, probe. Now, regardless of which probe you're using, what you're gonna to wanna to be mindful of is to make sure that you take a few key measurements. You want to measure the distance to the tip of the uh, collection of ascites, have a general sense of how deep you have to go to be right in the middle, and then also you want to define the deeper edge of the ascites, basically how deep um, is too deep and how deep will you go um, to actually get into dangerous structures that are behind the ascites. So, that is going to be done regardless of the type of probe. You want to take those few key measurements. And then also, uh, if you're not already using the linear probe, you're going to want to switch over and just scan over the subcutaneous structures with either color or um, power Doppler just to get a sense, are there any vessels in my anticipated trajectory that are going to um, be dangerous for me to go through with the needle? So you'll want to do all of that beforehand. Then when you have your... Um, when you have your ultrasound and you know your trajectory, take a pen, mark it, you can prep it. Um, and then when it gets time to doing the case, wherever you marked, you'll use your um, lidocaine. We have a 25 gauge needle here, make a skin wheel. Uh, after your skin wheel, you'll make your dermatotomy, of course. Then you uh, have a few options. You're gonna wanna numb up deeper into kind of the, the track that you're gonna take to actually drain the ascites. A few different ways you can do this. Um, all of these options can be done with or without uh, real-time ultrasound guidance. Uh, but regardless, if you know how deep you're going, it's not necessarily uh, required to use ultrasound for these portions. You can use the 25 gauge lidocaine needle again to numb up deeper or as deep as you can go. Um, and then you, what you can do is switch to uh, something like a UE needle. And this is a 19 gauge, five French, um, 10 centimeter length UE needle that we uh, very commonly use. There are straight and curved varieties. This is actually a curved variety where when you take off the catheter, it will curve into kind of like a pigtail to keep it secure in place. So you can numb up with lidocaine with a 25 gauge and then switch to the UE needle. Or if you want, you can just hook up your lidocaine to the UE needle and then directly give lidocaine with that as you go deeper. The advantage there is that once you get right outside the peritoneum, you can um, just poke through with the same needle, feed off your catheter into the collection. Then once your catheter, uh, your UE needle catheter is in there, you can hook up um, with your empty syringe uh, to take anything for diagnostic purposes. And if you've taken whatever you need for diagnostic reasons, then you can hook up to uh, like a vacuum container like we have here, and you can do a large volume paracentesis.